Hi, I'm Sunil Chilakri, a board certified dermatologist in Houston, Texas. Thank you for joining me as we discuss marketing on a budget. When I think about marketing, I think about our patients who are currently inside the office, but we're gonna share secrets on sharing some of the cosmetic procedures that you can offer your medical patients and vice versa, some of the medical procedures that you can offer your cosmetic patients. In terms of disclosures, while I do research for a lot of different companies, there shouldn't be any particular bias in this talk. I'm talking simply as a small business owner. When you think about marketing, there's two components that you need to understand. One is internal marketing. That's the captive audience that you have in front of you inside your exam room or inside the reception area, as well as external marketing. If you're a new practice, new business, and you're trying to gain some traction, how do you attract those clients? The first thing I talk about is who is your patient? Who's the ideal patient that you're looking for? Is it millennials? Do you love treating acne, acne scars? And that's a case of where you're going to treat and market to that younger generation. Do you love mommy makeovers? Are you trying to figure out ways to improve the body, to improve the face? Do you enjoy treating more mature patients? Or do you tr enjoy treating skin cancer? Once you identify who your ideal patient is, then you can consider utilizing both internal and marketing and external marketing techniques. When you talk about external marketing, you really think about this huge funnel that's out there. So one is going to be the general public. One is going to be those who then get to know your place of business. Then there's the people who are actually treated in your clinic. And then there's the patients who love the results from your clinic. And the question for us is how do we gain the general public knowledge about your actual office? Encourage them to come inside. And so again, this is a conversion funnel that's considered to be quite easy to use when you're attracting new patients. For me, I'm much less concerned about external marketing as I am more and more concerned about internal marketing. I don't want new patients, but I want those patients who come see us to understand the full breadth of what we're able to do within our office. And here's one of the reasons why. When you talk about new patient acquisition cost, it typically costs five times more to attract a new client to your business versus keeping one inside your practice and helping identify other services or procedures that they may be benefiting from. Harvard Business Review also showed that that person who already trusts you, who's already a part of your practice, is seven times more likely to try a new procedure that you offer them. And Overall, when you look at the summary here, you can see that those loyal customers are five times more likely to purchase something, and they're willing to spend 30% to 33% more on whatever that procedure is versus somebody that has no trust in your office yet, and you haven't earned that trust. So when we look at old-fashioned internal marketing, this is what we see at many clinics. There's brochures everywhere. And yes, they may be a little bit more organized in this closet, but they're listed on the reception area. They're put inside the patient rooms. And I say, shift needs to happen. And why is that? Because we understand that those best patients only know about 20% of the service that are there. They're not likely to pick up those pamphlets unless they happen to see some picture that's motivating them or you're utilizing that for education from a different purpose there. So how can we market to our patients? Well, it's all about display. Some of the simplest things that we can do is provide television displays inside each one of those rooms or any touch point with that patient. In this case, you can see in our reception area, it's not a waiting room, it's a reception area because patients are greeted and immediately walk back into the office and to the, uh, their actual exam room. And the reason that's always been a key component of what we do is we schedule appropriately. I don't want anybody waiting there. I want to make sure that they see a friendly face as soon as they walk in, and there's different things that we can do. If you have patients in a true waiting room, you can utilize the biggest display possible. Now, this one that we had in our reception area is a 72-inch screen TV, but now they're as big as 85 inches, and pick the proper space that you can do that. You can see in here, this original reception area, we had a little coffee bar. So if we're grabbing some water for a patient or encouraging them to have a snack, they're going to be looking over our heads to see, hey, what's flashing on that screen? And does that apply to something that I can do for myself? And here's an example. This is a patient who had a before and after non-surgical uh, result. And the one thing I want to encourage here or the tip that I want to provide is brand yourself. 
don't worry about what the device is that you're using. It can be cool sculpting, it can be Vanquish, it can be the M Sculpt Neo. It doesn't matter what the name brand of the device is. Why would you advertise for that company? Instead, specialize and brand yourself. So in this case, I used something that I describe as a silhouette procedure. I used three different devices in combination to provide the overall result that we need for this patient. And if you think about it, it's the same thing that you do in excisional surgery. You're not telling the patient, hey, I'm using a 4-0 Vicryl, and on top of that, I'm putting a 5-0 Proline. They don't care. They just want to see what the end result is. So think about your cosmetic patients exactly the same. It's all based on what's the result that you're going to provide. And if that result is nice enough for the patient and it gives value for that patient, they're willing to discuss and spend with you. Another internal marketing tip that I have is utilize simple old fashioned Apple TVs. You can get these on the secondhand market as a refurb from both apple.com as well as Craigslist for as little as $99. And in the old cases, even $59. This is applied to each one of our TVs because I use mostly an Apple iPhone inside our practice. We use iPads as well. And the reason that I picked that Apple TV is because I can project wirelessly to each one of those TVs, no matter which room we're inside. And here's an example of what we call a C-SLIM, so the silhouette procedure. This is one week after four treatments. And if I want to talk to a patient about body contouring and she has a similar body shape or habit as like this young lady, who's a 37 year old woman coming in for this type of result, then I can take my either my iPhone, my iPad or whatever contains all my pictures, simply project it up onto the screen. Also, we use this as screensavers. So the Apple TV gives you choices of different times before it goes back to the screensaver. And you can do this also on your computer if you have a computer inside the room. Use a screensaver with your before and afters. I can also apply videos here. In this case, the patient's questioning what the heck is going on. I can use that Apple TV during a live demonstration to show with the FLIR camera inserted at the bottom of my Apple iPhone to show what's going on while we're doing the treatment. So in each one of our treatment rooms, we have six, we have TVs that are on the ceiling as well. So the patient is nice and comfortable. They're questioning what the heck is going on. And I can visually show them that we're improving the overall temperature inside the skin while I'm explaining that if we get to the ideal temperature, we're gonna cause neovascularization, neocollagenesis by activating the fibroblast. The next step that you can offer is something called friend media. And there's a variety of different ways that you can do this. This is the one that I found the most simple for me. This use a little stick. It looks like an Amazon Fire Stick. It plugs into the USB drive or the HDMI drive of each one of your TVs. And remember, these TVs don't have to be expensive. I can get a 65 inch TV from Costco for approximately $550. That includes a two year warranty if I pay with that Costco Visa. So it doesn't have to be thousands upon thousands of dollars. In terms of the friend media stick, the, this is one of the most cost-effective things that I've found where each stick costs $99. And then I can either have an individual TV subscription or in my case for $299 is I believe what I pay per year or per month, excuse me, per month, I can have unlimited TVs. So in my small space, I only have 1900 square feet. I have 18 TVs, both on the ceiling as well as the front, as well as the reception area that we can utilize this before and after screen. The advantage of friend media is I can immediately change the content without asking for any help. As long as you have a computer, you have your login, you can change what's being displayed for that patient. With the latest iteration of this friend media stick, what we have is a little remote. And again, it looks like the, the Apple TV remote, it looks like your, your regular TV remote. And what you can do is you can change between different video loops based on what the patient is coming in for. So for me, if I wanna cross promote to our facial aesthetics patients that we also do things in terms of body contouring, let's say vaginal health, let's say wellness or anything else that we're offering even here, then we can simply change the quote unquote, change the channel using that remote as the patient is coming into the room. Another big advantage of friend media is I can use it with a QR code, self-generated QR code, where I can immediately direct the patient either to our website to learn more, or in some cases to leave a review at the end of that visit. Another way to display your talent or what else that you're offering inside the office is using 3D imaging. So we actually have something similar to this, where we have a 3D hologram that's built into our reception area. So as the person is checking in, oftentimes they'll pause to see 
hey, what the heck is that? I want to learn more about that. And you can have really pretty amazing technology that's inside your office. Something like this costs you either $3.99 per month to lease it, or you can pay a flat fee to have it installed at your office and then play, pay a monthly charge every time you update it. So the biggest advantage of this is you can see on the screen, it takes me less than a minute to update what content that I want to put in there. And each week this is being updated. Either I'm putting a new video in, it connects directly to our social media channels. So that's being updated on a daily basis, going in front of the patient. So even if that patient comes multiple visits during that week, they're going to have new content that's shown to them and they don't tune out or look down at their phone. What else do we have? We have old fashioned email. Don't discount email. Yes, the, the Open rate is significantly lower than it's ever been because we're being bombarded by so many channels, but it's a nice way that you can target patients um, uh, advertising or internal marketing for them. Don't forget to go social and make sure that across all these channels, including text, that you're consistent about the messaging that's there. The one thing that I do wanna emphasize here is really go ahead and hone in on who the database is. So as a 50 something year old gentleman, if I'm getting an email talking about vaginal rejuvenation, the first thing I wanna do is unsubscribe to that, that email blast. So target who you're trying to see. If you're doing more PRP for a chest lift or the fine lines and the decolletage, most guys aren't gonna be concerned about that, but most of your women are gonna be thinking about it. Not your 20 and 30 year olds, those who are in their forties and above in terms of age. And remember, social media is all about conversation. So you can have different apps that are out there now that allow you to text a patient and have a conversation virtually. So it's just using AI. When you do this targeted marketing, you're gonna find that you're gonna have an increased uh, engagement with your patients. And they may often ask, hey, what was that thing that you sent me? Or what was that that I saw on social media? So it's all based on really honing in on who your patient is and what services do you want to offer them? When we talk about external marketing, if you're a new practice that's coming into this arena or you're converting some of those patients over, you have to figure out who is the client that you want to attract. And again, there's lots of different applications. Some of this data is old. So I'm going to show you that Facebook, yes, it has the greatest number of users, but guess what? YouTube has even more. What's the latest and greatest? If you're a millennial, you're thinking about TikTok. If you're a middle-aged person, you're thinking about Instagram. And if you're a more mature patient, you may be considered more active on Facebook. So figure out who your client base is and go from there. When you talk about paid traffic to one of these sites, you can also, again, target who you want to, to really visit in. And right now, still the dominant players are gonna be Google ads as well as Facebook ads. And it's just a simple numbers game. You can see there's 2.2 billion users that are on Google and 1.2 billion users check into Facebook on a regular basis. So why are advertising pour, advertisers pouring so much money in? Because simply it works and you can do the same thing by doing targeted campaigns. I'm gonna show you just an example of a Facebook campaign that can be done. And if you've looked at it, you always are scrolling, you see there's sponsored ads from certain things. So here's an example. I want people like Jessica, let's meet Jessica. She is a lovely young lady. She loves the beach as you can see from these posts here, but she lives in Chicago. She's 35 years old. And when you look at her database, she's posting pictures from beaches all over the world. So she's in Honolulu in this case. She's in Cancun in this case. She's in Miami, Florida. And in each one of these pictures, she's wearing a bathing suit. Here's one again, even more Jessica. And this time it's in Cuba. So when you look at somebody like this, she's letting everyone know where she is. She's showing the world that she is fit. She loves to travel. She loves to go to beaches. And if you're talking about all these check-ins that are going in, I want to target to Jessica. I want her to know that there's lots of body contouring devices that we have inside our office that can enhance her results and enhance her, her pictures. So how do we find a Jessica? Well, you can create a custom campaign. So when you click on the ad, the ad button that's on Facebook, you can create that custom audience. I want somebody, let's say from the age of 30 to 50, I want them in our local area. So in this case, it was Chicago, or in my case, it's gonna be Houston, Texas. And what interests do they have? They need to love to travel. They need to love beaches. They wanna be fit. So there's lots of different ways that you can hone in on that and really make sure that you get the best ROI or return on investment for that Facebook or Google ad that you're doing. 
And again, here's a sample of a Facebook ad. There's lots of different ways to go about this. If you have a Mother's Day special, rather than devaluing or discounting the cost of what you're doing, make sure that it applies to the patient, show some great before and afters, and really understand what you want to do. If you want to take a screenshot, this might be something that's simple. This is just a target campaign that we were talking about, and try to figure out what's your projected growth. Every single time that you run an ad campaign, you want to see how many viewers actually looked at what you put out there, and what was the return on investment. So if your ad is $100 that you spent, how many people were actually calling in? So that's the first part of the funnel. And number two, how many of those are booking appointments? Second part of the funnel. And number three, out of those who book appointments to come in for consultation are actually getting the procedure. And that's really what qualifies. It's called a qualified lead. It's somebody who actually has interest, who's willing to spend on whatever it is that you're discussing inside there. So with this, I wanna talk about utilizing your resources. So now we talked about social media, we talked about using some of those before and afters. How do we capture those before and afters? Well, photography is essential, not just two-dimensional photography, but in some cases, three-dimensional photography. I'm gonna just share with you, there's three basic um, types of photo systems that are out there. One is Photo Finder, there's RX Photo, there's Canfield, and in 3D imaging, there's also Quantificure. And here's why it's so important. Look at this lovely lady. Is it a real result? And this is posted on RealSelf, which has 10 million users, and they're quite active on social media as well as the website of RealSelf. And so, yes, this might have been an amazing result, but I can't really tell the difference. The angle of the face is different. Makeup is applied on the second one. And look at the background. There's different lighting that's put into place. Some simple ways, if you're gonna use a professional system, you can use both the Canfield system. In this case, it's a photo finder system. This is, a, it's called an IntelliCart. So it has everything in one place. And this has been one of our favorite additions. It has a little laser that shows where the patient needs to stand. So you get the exact distance every single time. You line it up and it has a ghosting feature. So what is a ghosting feature? That means the first pictures that you take are gonna be your baseline. And then every time that person comes in, you can do a comparison so you can, overlay that on what the patient looks like on that day so you get consistent results. So here's an example of a body contouring patient that we treated. She's 62 years old. I never thought that she would want to do something. She happened to see something on cellulite that was coming as a before and after. She said, can I get that? And I said, sure, but the number one thing you want to do is you're thinking about body contouring is make sure that you have a good diet and exercise. Oh, I do. I go to a trainer four times a week. I exercise at the gym six times a week and I eat healthy. I said, great. What are your goals? I wanna look better in a bathing suit. So this way, when I take my grandchildren to the pool, I feel less self-conscious. Okay, fine, let's do a physical examination. So from there, you can show that she got great results. I never thought she'd let me use it, but she was so excited that as long as I don't mention her name, she said we can utilize her photos. And this is a great before and after. Look at the consistency and lighting, as well as the angle that's there. You can have the person either come inside a bathing with a bathing suit, or we now have disposable garments when we're doing body contouring. Look at the horrific photography that's placed here. So it doesn't matter if you're using an iPhone or iPad, I'm less concerned about that, but at the very least take the marks off the face, make sure that the angle is exactly the same and don't have any external background that's inside there that's seen in the lower picture here. There's another simple photo imaging system. It's called RX Photo. The big ad advantage of this is it's inexpensive. It utilizes your iPhone and it allows you also to have documentation so you don't need a separate cosmetic EMR. So when you look at this particular device, what you have, the, my favorite part, is the slider function. So you can show the before and after just by putting it in, say we want to show a picture to the patient and we have a slider function on our iPad that we can scroll back and forth. You can use the same exact device with the slider function plugged into your computer to then show and create these videos just like I've done here. So something that's pretty remarkable, relatively inexpensive. Uh, I'm on a legacy contract, so I believe I pay $199 a month for unlimited access to our photos and utilizing this for patient presentations as well as consultations. The most important part of this is you can use simple equipment. If you go on their website, you can also see some of the, the the uh, affiliate, affiliate clicks uh, links that are on there to show you what equipment that you would need to order. So something as simple as a, a stand, an I tripod, and that might cost $29. It shows you what type of background that you could use. It also shows you if you want to make it fancier and you have a dedicated photo room where you need to have lighting. Whichever room you use, I would suggest that you have 
drapes or shades that you can pull down when you're taking photos. So that time, it, it, that way it doesn't make any difference what time of day that you're taking the photograph, you have consistent lighting. Inside each one of our rooms, we have 5,000 Kelvin LED lights, and we have at least six lights in each room that are properly spaced above the exam bed. Why is that? I want it to mimic daylight. So when you have the consistent lighting and you have a dark backdrop and it's a consistent backdrop, you're going to get better photos. Here's a simple example of a patient that we treated, and I'm just using the same exact slider function to show here's a before and after. And this is using RX Photo to create this simple video, which takes takes probably about seven minutes because I'm not technologically advanced to create the video, it takes another two or three minutes to edit it. So I take out the beginning and after, and then you can see that I'm just using the slider function on an iPad that's connected to my computer to show the remarkable change. And this patient is actually six years older, utilizing multitude of technologies to keep her looking more refreshed than the day that she came in. You can also, in addition to the slider function, you can have it separate out so you can show them side by side. So the beauty of this device is that it allows a lot of marketing tools from a simple fee that's monthly. And if you're not using it, you just stop your subscription. 3D camera systems, in my opinion, are very useful for anybody who's doing a lot of body contouring or those of us who do a lot of research. But otherwise, in terms from, from a marketing standpoint, I'm less likely to use a 3D imaging system. There's two major ones that are out there. One is Quantificare, and the other one, which I prefer, is by Canfield. The Quantificare, at least in my opinion so far, has been harder to work with. There's more issues, and if there's something that goes down with the camera system or the, the actual uh, functional computer, it takes longer to have repair, whereas Canfield will send something right out to you. Again, no conflict of interest in terms of I'm not being paid by either company. I'm just telling you personal use and stories. If you're doing a lot of body contouring, especially non-surgical, you can put those two side-by-side -side images there and really calculate how much volume loss there is, especially on somebody who's thinner. This is a lovely young lady. You can see there's 631 cc's equivalent of fat loss that you would see inside with liposuction. So in terms of photography tips and pearls, some things you wanna make sure that you do, use the same lighting, use the same angle and have a neutral expression. So on the right, does she look better? I guess so. I don't know if this is talking about nose art is what this gentleman is describing here. All I see is there's better uh, terms of, of the skin quality, but I have no idea whether the nose is any better because look at the angle and look, she's smiling afterwards versus no smile at the beginning. So just standardize which ways that you're going to take the picture. Look in this case, on one side, on the left-hand side, there was a flash that was used. That's why that creates that shadowing. And on the right side, there was no flash used. So it's going to be a different type of lighting. Some of the simple things that you can do is use a simple black backdrop or a dark velvet backdrop that you can either paint or you can get from a fabric at Joanne's Fabric or some store like that and just hang it from a wall. If you want to be a little bit fancier, you can order on Amazon. They have these black screens that you can screw into the back of each exam door and just pull down that screen as you're taking a photograph. With good photography, you can see very subtle changes that occur. In this lovely young lady, she's uh, 62 years old. She had some great improvement after a single use of a device uh, called Moxie. So this is using a 1927 thulium laser. And overall, in the picture itself, she looks good. In real life, she looks great. But she says, I guess I'm a little bit better. I said, let me zoom in and show you where there's the biggest change that I see. And it's this area where there's static write-ins that have improved dramatically. So with your photography, remember that you can use all of this both on your video screens, your TV screens, your computer screens, as well as your hologram screens. Get great before and after photographs. I hope that this helps with your internal marketing. If there's anything that I can answer, and external marketing, if there's anything I can answer, I'm Sunil Chilakuri, Refresh Dermatology. You can DM me anytime on Instagram and just send me a message and asking the question. Hope to answer your questions in live person or on DM. Thanks again for joining me from Houston, Texas.